Hi guys, it is a lovely summer morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, here on this beautiful, what is it, are we already at Wednesday, somewhere around July 20th, 2022, somewhere around, no, you're not jumping out of there. The sun is not that hot yet. So I guess we're under the first heat advisory of the year today here at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes, heading up to the mid-90s. But right now it is a pleasant morning, so uh, before the hot sun uh, sends me reeling into the air conditioning of my gas-sucking truck, since I don't have any air conditioning here, I just want to uh, check in with uh, I don't know if Reynard Loki is a uh, is one of the a Collapse Chronicles followers, but I am uh, one of his. And Reynard, I want to thank Reynard Loki for being one of the few people to actually have the cojones to talk about. Uh, you know, the number one story on the planet. The only story on the planet at this point. And that is the O word. Overpopulation. And uh, actually, Reynard is going to pass the, uh, pass the overpopulation essay torch over to a fellow named Carter Dillard from the Independent Media Institute. So who is Carter Dillard? Three cheers for Carter uh, for writing this essay, I, you know, preaching to the choir, no doubt. Carter Dillard is the policy advisor for the Fair Start movement. He served as an honors program attorney at the U.S. Department of Justice, wow, and also served with a national security law agency <coughs> before developing a comprehensive account of reforming family planning for the Yale Human Rights and Development Law Journal. So uh, that's pretty uh, interesting uh, resume for uh, someone who gets it about overpopulation. All right, so take it away. Carter Dillard and uh, explain uh, what eight billion humans means for the planet. <clears throat> eight billion humans? Population is a difficult conversation, but we need to start getting real. And uh, I love this picture that Reynard puts up here, a little cute little pink onesie jumpsuit. <clears throat> I am the eight billionth person. Now, honestly, my guess is there's probably already well over eight billion people on this planet. Nobody knows uh, within a billion people either direction how many people are on this planet but for the you know eight billion pick a number all right <clears throat> it is time to rethink our broken and unfair family planning systems mm -hmm. july 11th was world population day you know, of course, that was the uh, biggest headline on the planet as all eyes were uh, turned to World Overpopulation Day. An observance established by the United Nations aiming to highlight population issues, particularly how the human population relates to the environment. The UN's Department of Economic and Social Affairs marked the occasion by releasing its World Population Prospects 2022 report, which announced that the global human population is on target to reach a new milestone, 8 
billion people on this planet by November 15th, 2022. And of course, uh, this is the single most dire, grimmest, starkest UN report ever released in the history of the United Nations. This, this report. And if, do you think you will see the words dire, grim, or stark associated with it? Okay. <clears throat> While this staggering figure should alarm even the most casual observer of the various environmental and health crises stemming from the overpopulation that is emblematic of the Anthropocene, like climate change, deforestation, ocean acidification, food and water shortages, plastic pollution, air pollution, biodiversity loss, and don't forget the sixth mass extinction. The UN, as uh, I was pointing out in my own rant on July 11th, the UN has advanced a false narrative trumpeting trumpeting the, quote, story behind 8 billion people and how we have got here as a story of triumph, close quote, saying that reaching this milestone is, quote, a cause for celebration, yes, with infinite possibilities for growth. Yep, I say uh, 8 billion people. That certainly, there's 8 billion possibilities for more growth of the cancer cells eating the planet. So this is Dr. Bannett Diana Bangy. Yes, uh, the East and Southern Africa Regional Director of the UN Population Fund. Yes. Quote, we must celebrate a world of 8 billion people, mm, writes the sub-Saharan African, Dr. Diane Nabangi. Yes, and others are picking up that upbeat messaging about the celebration of 8 billion people being crammed onto the planet as, uh, you know, as how many people on the planet consider the highest and best use of a planet uh, as trying to figure out how to stuff the most humans onto a planet. Obviously, this dude from Africa, yeah, putting, putting a sub-Saharan African in charge, making him regional director, you know, the African regional director from the UN Population Fund is somewhat like appointing Sancho Panza as the regional New York uh, director of the Chipmunk uh, Protection Fund. Anyway, back to Carter. The truth is, the truth is that growth meaning growth at mainly in population, but growth and everything else, is undoing the progress we have made in our response to the climate crisis. Also, our near universal family planning systems have been based on a lie that having kids is more personal for the parents than interpersonal for the future child, our communities, and our planet. This is a lie that maintains the generational privilege of the wealthy and promotes unsustainable growth over birth entitlements that would have ensured all kids were born in conditions that comply with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Uh, then he links you over to that. That would be an interesting rant in and of itself. I might save that 
for a later day. I can only imagine uh, what that sounds like. <clears throat> the interrelated ecological and public health crises facing humanity and the planet fundamentally, fundamentally driven by the Anthropocene and the population growth that defines the era have already been causing massive harm to countless species, including people, and perhaps most problematically, the children who will carry with them lifelong impacts. And we're on track to make things even worse. And he quotes uh, NASA, quote, the effects of human-caused global warming are happening now, are irreversible on the time scale of people alive today and will worsen in the decades to come. Well, it will actually worsen uh, in the hours to come. That's why I need to get out there with my Save the Planet electric lawnmower while I still can. <clears throat> We will add billions more people to this catastrophic scenario. Around 10.4 billion by 2100, with the UN itself projecting widespread famine. And uh, again, this is what I was talking about in my own rant, that, uh, you know, that the day they released this celebration where one arm of the U.S. was calling 8 billion people something to, a milestone to celebrate in uh, the annals of humanity. I think it was the very same day or within the same week, <coughs> another arm of the U.N. was claiming that we're looking at over 2 billion people, most of them children, possibly facing starvation. So here we go. So uh, I guess 2.2 2 billion children getting ready to starve to death, uh, according to the United Nations, is something to celebrate. Now, of course, if these 2 billion children had never been born, they would not be facing starvation. Uh, but, but anyway, let me get back to Carter. Back to Carter. All right. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, the state of food security and nutrition in the World 22 report around 670 million people, 8% of the world's population are expected to face hunger by 2030. Sadly, as the FAO points out, that figure is the same figure as in 2015, when the goal of ending food insecurity and malnutrition by the end of this decade was launched under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Over this 15-year period, humanity would have made exactly zero progress in the fight to end world hunger. And then a couple of years after 2030, it's going to be worse than, uh, you know, 2015. Uh, and, and, of course, we're not going to get into uh, the whole uh, pointless debate uh, whether or not there are going to be 10.4 billion children, 10.4 billion people on this planet by the end of the century when one-fourth of the planet is already getting ready to starve to death. Where we are now with climate change and the uh, building nuclear annihilation and all the rest of it. But anyway, <clears throat> I'm not going to get off on that. Back to Carter. 
more people, more inequality. Another concern is that the multitude of environmental and health impacts are not shared equally, hmm, but depend on hard to grasp levels of inequality. Yes, this is really hard to grasp. Moreover, as the UN itself reports, inequality is growing for more than 70% of the global population. The people least responsible for the climate crisis, the poor and the vulnerable, are set to suffer the most, and yet the rich world is pushing for more humans that will exacerbate the crisis. Now with abortion bans on the rise across the United States and wealthy nations like Australia, Estonia, Finland, Italy, and Japan offering their citizens financial incentives to have more babies. Even the Pope does not grasp the reality of our situation. In his 2015 encyclical, the pontiff lamented ecological degradation and global warming, writing that Mother Earth, quote, cries out to us because of the harm we, meaning humans, have inflicted on her by our irresponsible use, close quote. Yet, he has failed to recognize that unchecked human population growth is not only damaging to the environment, but also to the welfare of future generations. That failure is made clear by his encouraging of young people to have more babies. Now, I'm just going to diverge here. I distinctly remember, I am 100% sure uh, I did not imagine this. It was right after uh, this newest pope uh, was put in power by whoever puts popes in power. Uh, never, I've never really been sure uh, who elects the Pope, but anyway, right after, I mean, I mean he'd been, in, uh, been the Pope, I, I mean, for, I feel like it was about a week, but s pretty soon uh, after he got there, he made this comment uh, at, uh, at one of his first public appearances that Catholics do not need to breed like rabbits. And I, I would like to find this quote, and, and I was utterly shocked, and I predicted you damn well better believe that he's going to be rescinding that comment, and you better believe the next day he was up there, a, you know, apologizing and talking about how his you do not need to breed like rabbits was misconstrued and all of this and whoever it is that the Pope reports to you know is now telling the Pope who knows damn well the Pope knows damn well uh, what overpopulation is doing to this planet but whoever he reports to is telling him, you know, the little Pope puppet uh, to get out there and encourage young people to have more babies. We need to figure out who is it that the Pope is reporting to. Is he, is he reporting to Antonio Guterres? Is he reporting to Henry Kissinger? Anyway, now we're going to look at some failed family planning. <clears throat> Designed in the 20th century, near universal family planning models and systems treated the act of having children as personal rather than interpersonal 
which calls human and societal growth to arc too high for the planet's carrying capacity. Hmm. Currently, humanity is using 1.8 times the ecological resources that the Earth is able to generate in a single year. This year, according to the Global Footprint Network, humans will hit Earth Overshoot Day on July 28th. We are eight days away from Earth Overshoot Day 2022. Put another way, put it, but this another way, the current human population is now so high that we need the resources of 1.8 Earths to sustain us for just one year. The world's broken family planning models have prevented a fair distribution of wealth among children, in particular protecting pockets of extreme wealth and privilege and ensuring that the gulf between ensuring the gulf between rich and poor we see today. While many loud the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which ensures the protection, survival, and development of children without discrimination, the fact is that world leaders have never applied it to the majority of children or to future generations as a standard for birth and development conditions. Billions of people were born over the past several decades in conditions that blatantly violated the UN Convention's own standards. Standards we recognize as universal to develop functional societies. They were born under the myth, otherwise known as the lie, that whether a child is born rich or poor was determined by fortune or the will of some invisible force. What went wrong? Past models viewed children as economic inputs to grow economies rather than empowering them to become citizens to run the town halls that must precede and regulate economies. The impact was existential. It is now a zeitgeist to see falling fertility rates as a baby bust or threat to economic growth and the further commodification of nature, the Children's Convention be damned. The UN's World Population Day rhetoric reflects this old bottling and deference to the wealthy who wish to provide an advantage for their own kids. Can you say Elon Musk, the richest a moron on the planet with at least 10 children. This old modeling, treating the act of having children as more personal than interpersonal, is based on what legal theorists call a baseline error. Yes. <clears throat> Many companies and governments worked together. Do you think so? Yes. Uh, many corporations and governments worked together uh -huh, to adopt the Paris Agreement as the key standard for climate policy. It allows for significant emissions and global warming despite current changes in the climate causing massive harm to infants and children. The entities behind the Paris Agreement, those entities otherwise known as the shadow government, 
okay? This is real right-wing conspiratard stuff, guys. The shadow government, which is, you know, it's the, uh, the, the little back room uh, military industrial complex. Good old boys. Those guys. The entities behind the Paris Climate Agreement were making decisions about what the world should look like. And that vision for them set a baseline against which to measure what is the cost and what is the benefit. <clears throat> there is something wrong with this picture. Ha! Huh. Something wrong with this picture. If you believe in freedom under any theory of liberalism, it is impossible for a group of people to decide what the world should look like for everyone. The baseline, or what the world should look like, is instead itself a group of relatively self-determining, i.e. free people. How can we know what is the cost of the benefit or the rules that allocate them without being organized as a participatory group capable of making such decisions? How can we be self-determining or free in a world dominate, dominated by a singularly anthropocentric viewpoint in which some humans consent to the power of other humans rather than a more logical and ethical nature-centric viewpoint. Now, I could go off on a three-hour rant answering Carter's question, but uh, I have to get out there and mow the grass for my Airbnb guest before uh, heat stroke weather kicks in, so I will have to answer Carter's question some other time. <clears throat> okay, back to Carter's rant. <clears throat> Population growth based economic gains were created by intentionally violating the standards represented in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, entrusting that children would be born and raised in unfair and unequal conditions. A small minority of mostly wealthy white men have waged a war on women's health, made abortion less accessible. I didn't realize that Clarence Thomas was a white man. Huh, I'll have to look at pictures of Clarence Thomas. Anyway, uh, made abortions less accessible and profited by externalizing massive costs onto women and children decade after decade. In short, number one, humans overshoot. Number two, the profits went to some and cost to others based on the lie that having kids was more personal than interpersonal. And number three, justice requires we compensate those harmed. All right, so now for the hopium, finding a solution. Okay, I'm gonna tell, and I, and I haven't read this part because usually when I get to the hopium, I stop reading. Uh, I'm going to see if Clarence Dillard suggests keeping your pecker in your pants and not letting your knickers down anywhere in finding a solution. I'm gonna take a wild guess 
that Clarence Dillard or whatever his name is, uh, nowhere in finding a solution to the overpopulation crisis is going to suggest not breeding. Let's see. I hope I'm wrong. Finding a solution. So what can we do? What can we do to stem the overpopulation crisis? First, we can pressure